Hi, this is Alex Marie Sewing Tutorials and I'm Bobby Lee. So today we're going to be talking about tools. What tools do I need? Obviously you might be a beginner or just someone that wants to take on sewing again after a while. So I'm just going to advise you on the basic tools that you need to get started. Just a few tools that are not too expensive and they can get you moving. Over time you build up your own tool collection based on what you need and what you're going to be sewing. Nothing too much. So for now, all I want you to do is subscribe hit that notification bell because I'll be releasing a new video every week updating you on new stuff and new things and these lessons coincide with my website you can also visit my website www.alexmariesewingtutorials.com.ng where I have even more details and it's fully illustrated and you can keep up with me and it's all free so let's get started see you after the break Let's start with scissors, very important. First type of scissors you need are fabric shears. These are your heavy duty scissors. You're going to be using them to cut all your fabric and everything. If you can get really good quality ones that you can sharpen over time, they will last for a long while. Pinking shears, these are zigzag scissors. That's actually what they do. They make zigzag cuts into your fabric. The importance of this is that when cuts are made on the bias or in zigzag form, your fabric doesn't fray. So you use this to clean up your uh, seams when you're done sewing. Cheap scissors that you use for cutting paper, cardboard, and all other miscellaneous cutting. Pins. You need good, sturdy pins. You can get two basic types. You can get simple straight pins like these, which can be found in any stationery store. Or you can get something more elaborate or longer with plastic heads or glass heads, which I like because they're easier to see and they're easier on the fingers when you're pinning through thick layers. Sewing threads. There are so many types of threads for basic sewing, for embroidery, for serging, and what have you. But what we're concerned with now is polyester thread simple 100% polyester thread which can be used for all purposes and so many things because polyester is more durable and it stretches a little you there's cotton thread silk threads and all the threads wax threads and what have you but what you need is 100% polyester threads the important thing to note is they come in different lengths 200 yards 800 meters and that tells you how thick the bundle will be and they also come in different thicknesses well, the average thickness which you usually would need will be 40s measuring tape this is like the stethoscope of <laughs> tailors and seamstresses you're going to have it around your neck all the time obviously its main purpose is to measure things for body measurements you could even use it like a ruler it's like a flexible tape it's good for measuring curves the average um, length of measuring tape is 60 inches or 150 cm depending on which area you're from so you should just get one uh, i like the ones with big numbers because they're easier to see chalk and other marking tools get some kind of washable marker you have the ones that are actually made for fabric i actually use crayola washable markers that are for children they work great for me i've never had problems removing them they come off even white fabric but whatever you choose to buy test it before you use it taylor's chalk this is not really like the chalk used to write on the board. It's a bit thicker, more waxier, almost like a cross between chalk and soap. But it comes off easily, washes off, it can dust off, and that's why you need to use it for making all sorts of markings, seam allowances, darts, design lines, whatever you're marking on your fabric. And of course, it's not permanent. Needles, you need two types of needles. You need needles for your sewing machine and you need hand sewing needles. When it comes to sizes of needles, for everyday sewing on your sewing machine, 14 is okay. Hand sewing needles, mostly you need something around size 10. Um, if you go down to size ones and twos, they're really big. Now, the difference between uh, sewing machine needles and hand sewing needles is really the position of the eye and the shape. Um, sewing machine needles have a flat end or a thick rounder end on one side. On the opposite side, you have the sharp pointy end. And it's on the sharp end that you have the eye of the needle. On the other hand, on hand sewing needles, it's usually just an even cylindrical shape. And you have the eye on one end and the sharp end on the other end. Other small tools. First is the seam ripper. This is for ripping out seams. For 
loosening up things you've already sewn. The good thing about it, you can easily pick out the stitches one by one, or you can use the blade in the middle and rip through the stitches. One way or the other, it's a little safer than using a razor blade so that you don't damage your fabric and you don't leave big holes in your fabric. Next up, you have a seam gauge. A seam gauge is really just a small ruler. I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't call this a necessity, but usually you can get them in a pack with the seam ripper. You just end up with one at some point. So, but its purpose is to quickly help you measure out um, seam allowances, hem allowances, and all sorts of little measurements you might be making. So it's adjustable. It's just a really small ruler. But I won't say it's the most important thing, but if you get one or you have one, that's really what it's for. We have uh, little snippers. These are like small scissors. They generally come with your sewing machine. If you buy a new sewing machine, you, you will see it with the accessories. Otherwise, you can actually just buy one. Or in my case, they actually came with my seam ripper and my seam gauge. So these little tools have to come together. Next, you have your tracing wheel. Tracing wheel to me is really important because from the get-go, you'll be shocked how many times you need to trace things. Really, that's the whole point. It's for tracing markings from one piece of fabric to another, for tracing your patterns onto your fabric, and vice versa. And you, I usually use carbon paper, but if your eyesight is really good, you might not need it. But that's how I use it. So you use it to trace and easily transfer markings from one place to another. Next, you have your awl. And all is usually used by people that sew leather because it's used for puncturing holes. But you can also use it in fabric if you want to mark a hole like the peak of a dart or some other small dot that you want to keep in. And the idea is that an all just pushes the threads away and makes the hole. So when you iron your fabric, the hole closes up. So it's not a permanent hole, but it's a visible hole. Storage. You need some kind of storage. Traditionally, when I was younger, I used to use a Danish cookie tin because I don't know, we always seem to have one and they're just big enough to hold your scissors and every other thing. You might even have a big cupboard at home and all that, but it's nice to have a small portable way to carry your sewing things, especially the ones you use over and over and over and can easily be put by your sewing machine. So try and find something, but mostly I'll leave it to you. Drafting tools. Starting off, let's go with basic pencils nothing serious just hb pencils 2b pencils you can get drafting pens precision pens the 0 0.4 0 0.7 it's nothing too special just something that makes nice clean lines and doesn't drip a lot of ink you can also have permanent markers when you want something thicker and more visible then of course sharpener eraser just your basic drawing tools Next, you have the kind of rulers you might need. If you notice, most of these rulers are transparent. I think they work better when they're transparent and are easier to use. But if you get stainless steel ones, it's not the end of the world. That's okay too. The most important ones are one type of curve ruler or the other French curves anyway. And then after that, you also need a straight ruler, any type of nice straight ruler. And you need an L square or a set square. You don't need both of them, but something to make nice right angles for you because you're going to be squaring out a lot of right angles when we're drafting finally if you just happen to have a quilting ruler like this this can be used as your straight ruler and your l square set square thing because it can do it all but you'll still need a curve ruler after all paper you need sheets of drawing paper or sheets of cardboard paper or brown paper or tracing paper rolls of them it, it really depends what i usually use that i find are very inexpensive are rolls of brown paper these i get them in the large size of 28 inches by 40 inches and it covers most of my needs a yardstick or a meter rule this is essentially just a really long ruler but it's specifically a yard long or a meter long it depends finally you need a sewing machine these tutorials I really get towards sewing with a machine. We are going to have um, lessons on sewing by hand because you wouldn't be complete if you don't know how to sew by hand. But mostly we're going to be using a sewing machine. But I am not going to go into details on sewing machines in this video. That's a whole other topic. We'll concentrate on that in the next video where I tell you about what kind of sewing machines you should get and if you already have one, how to use it, how to care for it, and so on and so forth. Thank you for watching. Bye.